30 years. Over 30 years? <laughs> yeah, okay, over 30 years. So what gives you guys the patience to actually continue to keep doing this and as much as you love it, obviously, but is there anything else that keeps it going? Mm. I have started play, to play cello when I was six years old. Berto started when he was five. And uh, it's a way of living. And for him. And, uh, and, you know, yeah, uh, I, have, I love music. And uh, of course, uh, to be a professional musician, it's a tricky thing. Sometimes you, you feel that, uh, especially uh, when you are touring and you have played like 150 shows already, mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. The same tour, then you think that I could do something else yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. But for example, at the moment when you start the tour, you are like a full of power and excitement to do the new repertoire, yes. new songs again, mm -hmm. and it's a, you know, it's life. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's your job. And some some mornings you wake happy, wake mm -hmm. up happy, and some mornings you are you right. know, <laughs> you would stay in the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Okay, so um, by way of the next one, um, by way of the the music that you guys have produced, I know that you came from a background of doing Metallica covers. Okay, fine. But thank goodness that you did your own after a while, once people got used to you. Um, and there have been a lot of genres. Um, I think, have you heard of a David Garrett? Are you familiar? He's a violinist. No. And he basically, I mean, since you guys have been around for as long as you have, I'm sure that they ended up getting the idea somewhere <laughs> from what you guys do. Where's he, where's he, where's he I, from? He's a German uh, violinist. Oh, I haven't heard well. about him yet, but I've never heard his play. He's, but he's, okay. I guess I heard that he's pretty mm -hmm. f f famous at the moment. Oh, in yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're, yeah pretty, um, pretty famous. But the idea that taking all of these pop songs, like you were saying, yeah. and turning them into making people become a little bit more aware that you can create such music off of a cello or a violin or so forth. Do you think, what do you think that you guys have lent to the music community by way of that for your own style? Say for instance, for people who haven't heard of you before, what would, what would be a good definition of what you what you guys are about? I would say, f first I got to say mm -hmm. that uh, the first two albums we did was like cover albums. And the third album was the, the starting point of Apocalyptic, when we started to, to create the old music. And I would say that, that was the, without that album and without this step to start to do own music, we would not exist anymore. And uh, I guess, for example, if I'm listening to the, the pop music, rock music, and, and Finnish radios, there's a lot of strings and okay. string and classical instrument all the time. And maybe that our uh, our pretty, yeah, we have just done some some involvement for this. Okay. Okay. Good. You pat yourself on the back for that. Mm. <laughs> But, um, and then by way of, um, since we discussed um, your relationship with your bandmates, um, what, is, what is the one thing that you have learned out of this industry? The good and the bad, the pros and the cons. You know, it's, hey, we are in Chicago. Yeah. It's windy, did you say it, windy? The windy city. Windy city. <laughs> uh, the record industry is windy yeah. industry. Okay. Uh, for every album we have done, there is always some changes in the labels, companies. Maybe we are not changing them, but the, the labels are changing the names, and so many people are changing their jobs. And, uh, it's it's not really stable. It's really day by day living in the industry, and sometimes it's really sad because when you have found a good team to work with you, yeah. next. Next album, that's totally new. Luckily, this time we have a couple of same persons working with us than previous one. But it's, 
at the moment the record sales are so much going down so there's not too much money for promote the people to work there half of the record companies have um, they have cut the employees like maybe half of the people I just heard that the, for example our record company rep, reps the radio reps they are working from home they yeah. they don't have any more offices yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that tells something. Yeah, right. just go and download the album f for free. <laughs> no. Yeah, but let's you, go yeah, for it. Go to iTunes and yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> iTunes is good as well. Mm -hmm. There is no money coming to the artist at all. No. Okay. That's very unfortunate. But uh, again, going back to touring yeah, and it's working. We're gonna end up for the situation that m music is not going to disappear, but. It go, it's going to change a lot. Mm -hmm. And so how it's presented to people. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's going to be really hard for the small bands and mid-sized bands. Nowadays, bands are not earning any money from the, the albums. So it's, so it's less, less, and mon less money to produce the good albums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only the, the big names, which has stabilized their position they can use a lot of money for the albums mm -hmm. and then the music will change for the hit song music okay. and another end is like it's just underground there's something to so. be said about the underground movement of how music is exchanged for people yeah. that's how i heard of yeah. you guys so yeah the yeah. underground movement is somehow interesting but still that's really you know if you want to produce a good album and with a good mix, you need money for that. It, it, it does not happen. The good, good sound is never done with a, without money. It's a sad thing. Yeah. Uh, do you guys work out of your own personal studio or do you still... And no, 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 we have used just like a good studios. We, we produce a couple of albums like a, mostly in our home studios and then we mix them. Somewhere, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. That's a, uh, actually nowadays the the way to produce the albums in a low level. Okay. So they, they use the rehearsal room studios and home studios, mm -hmm. and then they mix that somewhere. Right. right. Okay. But so it's hobby. It's not professional way to do that. Right. Right. Understandable. Um, and then lastly. Um, what? How do you try transfer that energy that you have on stage onto an album? Because <laughs> uh -huh. we've seen your shows before, and they're a spectacle. <laughs> yeah. How do you get all of that energy in that? Yeah, it's uh, of course that's a trigger thing. Cause we are pretty energetic mm -hmm. on the stage, and I guess we have uh, in this seventh symphony album we. But I try to get something from the live energy to the album, and I guess we have managed pretty well in a couple of songs. Yes. Okay. okay, so we will hear it this evening. And now you have not heard the album yet. No, I have not. I've only heard really? bits and pieces of it. Okay. Yes. In that case, m make sure that you will get the, the version with like uh, bonus tracks and the DVD. Ah, okay. You would love the DVD because okay. it's that, like an album is like a pretty full package of the energetic and really sometimes hard moments, sometimes sweet moments, but mm -hmm. the DVD uh, is the verse, it's a, there's a five songs okay. and we are doing them li like live performance, uh -huh. acoustic way, ah, about okay. the same songs. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yes, yeah, then that's yes, a, a, another side the of the coin. Or, mm -hmm. uh, and any special messages for your fans? I'm saying keep loving music. It gives you cohesion uh, of, uh, uh, you know, it brings you up from the everyday life. And we human beings need some, some more magical moments sometimes.